But other countries are down there doing the same thing. Nicaragua right. uh, um, and other countries are doing the same thing. Even, even uh, 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 how you say? Um, okay, because let me get this call real quick. We've got a caller. Okay. That thought. Caller. Yeah, we take all the calls. Oh, yeah, we're going to take all the calls today. Caller. Hello? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What's up? Fantastic. I say. Uh, I just wanted to say, uh, for a course correction, uh, in fact, Venezuela is the eighth largest oil producer in the world, not the first, uh, behind uh, such countries as China, Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, the U.S. So, in fact, they are 3.7% of the world's oil production. They are not the first. So, we're entitled to opinions. We are not entitled to facts, my brothers. Uh, we also want to uh, let you guys know that, you know, turn. Not Ryan, I, Hugo Chavez, Okay, say that again. I'm okay, sorry, let's call it. sorry, Carl, we have a technical difficulty. Repeat everything you just yes. said, because the volume was low. Okay, no, I'm sorry, forgive me. No, no it's not your fault. No, it's not your fault. So what I was saying is that, in fact, uh, the Hugo Chavez and his revolution, while great, we shouldn't lionize brothers like this, because, you know, on, on paper, socialism is fantastic. On paper, capitalism is fantastic. On paper, Marxism is fantastic. In practice, they suffer from the foibles of all men, just like through all of history. We know this to be a fact. And the true fact is that Venezuela is not the number one oil producer in the world. It is, in fact, the eighth oil pr uh, largest producer in the world at 3.7%, falling behind China, falling behind the U.S., falling behind Saudi Arabia, the U.S. Emir uh, Arab Emirates. So let's, uh, let's just keep the facts right. I appreciate what you brothers are saying. You guys are spouting some great truth. But let's not lionize these systems because it's really the foibles of men that will bring these down every time, and we just have to remember that. Okay. That's all I have to say. Thank you, brothers. Ashe. Okay, well, I'm Ashe, not going to say that because I got the numbers right here from the World Factbook, and this is where the information is. So don't get mad at me about that information. You take it up with the CIA. That's number one. Number two, you, did, you failed to mention any system in today, in today's society, in the 20th century, that has reduced the poverty down to 50 percent. Today we're talking about Chavismo, you know, whether Venezuela, you feel, has less oil than the United States, the fact that still remains, just like Brother Mukas and Brother Dave mentioned, is that um, 50 percent not only of the Huber, uh, Venezuelan population was taken out of poverty, but a lot of that oil was sent up here to help us out, heating some of these black people in the United States. So yes, and not only that, let's go on and make it clear. Yeah. Young man, your figures are absolutely wrong. And that according to the uh, United States news, which is nothing but a bunch of liars, uh, according to what they're saying, it is said that Venezuela have more oil right. than uh, Saudi Arabia. But however much they have, they use the profit to go to the people. If they don't have but a drop, that drop is benefiting all the people of Venezuela and South America, and it benefits a lot of people right here in the United States. Venezuela have a socialistic system, and under socialism, everything belongs to the people, and you work to serve the people, to give the people all the things that they need as human beings, lights, gas, water, food, clothing, intelligent knowledge and everything else to create human happiness and human human comfort right. under capitalism they exploit the people put the people in slavery drug the people build prison prison industrial complexes uh, and make the people suffer capitalism makes people suffer it's an evil system the rich get richer and the poor get poor under capitalism, free people are always found. Have and have not, slave and a slave master, the oppressed and the oppressor. We are on the side of the oppressed. Yeah, and I think, I think he's confused because like a lot of people get confused because Venezuela is what they have, what they call heavy oil. So one barrel of heavy oil is equivalent to Saudi Arabia, United States, 10, uh, well, let's just say one of their heavy barrel oils, mm. you can, dilute, to t 
I see. I think they said about sixty barrels of their mm. uh, but petrol. It, it don't matter how much right. they got. The fact of the matter is, Venezuela is solving the problems of the poor people. Hugo Chavez is on the side of the poor people. Yeah. Obama and American presidents are on the side of the rich people. And they continue to put you in slavery and to dog the human world and to bomb them and kill them and murder them and create suffering. Uh, Hugo Chavez and the Venezuelan Revolution, Bonavar Revolution in Venezuela, and the Socialist Revolution that's sweeping South and Central America and will soon be in the Caribbean uh, is working to end the oppression that Europe and France and, and Spain and the United States, the suffering that they have brought to these people over the last hundred or so years. Matter of fact, there was another country, another man in uh, uh, Grenada, Maurice Bishop. Mm -hmm. And Maurice Bishop was following the path of Fidel and the path that Hugo Chavez has taken. And when they won their revolution and they were working to solve the social problems, uh, Reagan and those in 1983, uh, around October 25th, at uh, around nine o'clock at night here, uh, they invaded that country and they killed the president uh, the, of the New Jewel movement and put the country back in slavery. Now mind me, you, I would like to say to you, the reason they saw Grenada and the president as such a great threat to the United States, the one thing they got going is that the people that won their freedom in Venezuela speak Spanish. The people in Cuba speak Spanish. But the revolution in Grenada, they spoke English. And the United States felt that that was a special threat because you, their slave, would hear free speaking, free thinking uh, people and they didn't want you to hear them. They didn't want you to hear people talk that was not under the white man, was not his slave. They wanted to keep the slaves talking to you, those who beg in America, love America, and, and obeying them and begging for crumbs and talking about Democrat and Republican right. and just trying to get closer to their white master. They didn't want you to hear people who have cut their, the Democrats' hands off, the Republicans' hands off, have cut America's hands off, and now they're working to take over the economic and feed and clothe their own people. This is Maurice Bishop in Grenada. That's the reason they killed Maurice Bishop and overthrew that revolution. That's the reason they overturned the government of Kwame Nkrumah. That is the reason that they overthrow governments all over the world. They don't want us to be free. And that's one of the reasons that Haiti was the first revolution to win. And for a hundred years, Haiti stood as a free, powerful nation, economically, socially, independent of the white man. And the United States, of course, invaded the country and oppressed the people again. And today, the United States along with France and other European nations, they're making the black people in Haiti suffer because they got free. They want to make sure they never enjoy that freedom. Even though Martin Luther King made the civil rights be a pass, Dr. King was shot in the mouth by the FBI to, to so, make sure he never enjoyed it. So, you know, you talk about, you know, we just heard Mukasa talk about assassinations. Now, I know mm -hmm. they tried to attempt assass Well try to coup d'etat with uh, Brother Chavez. They put him in jail. Well, well, they always, when we have that different types of things that's going on, you understand when it's always someone is for the people. Okay. Someone is definitely for the people. And there's always modes of assassination. Right, right. There's always talk about assassination. They came after Gaddafi or what about that. That's right. They came after Chavez. A number of times. Saddam Hussein. They came right. after Saddam Hussein about that. They actually came after, uh, 
Who was that? There's another brother that came after him. Shoot, I mean, there's a whole lot. Well, I mean, Kuma, <laughs> Sega, <laughs> Toure, <laughs> Robert Mugabe, but Zimbabwe. As you tend to put yourself in that position, mm -hmm. and when you are for the people, there's always an assassination. Now, right. let's take that world view that we see, and let's bring it back home. Okay. Let's bring it to the Black Panthers. When the Black Panthers said, oh, we're the people, right. we're for the people. When you say those words for the people and you're not speaking on the words of economics, other people, mm -hmm. what tends to happen? They come after you. Look what they did to the Black Panthers. Right. I That's mean, in our community. Right. We got Bamiya Abu Jamal. We got Fred Hampton. Yeah, exactly. you got Martin Luther King. You got you Malcolm X. Yeah. Malcolm X. Yeah. Nat yeah, Turner. You got all uh, these Marcus Kyle Garvey. Marcus, you, Debbie B. Du Bois. Paul have, Robeson. You have right. all that. Fannie Lou Hamer. Let's, let's, take, let's, let's get this measure. Let's look at when Barack Obama was running for presidency. Mm -hmm. And as he was in his very first four weeks, what word was he called? He was called the food stamp president. I mean, we he was can... called a socialist. Oh, that's right, a socialist. What is the reason why he was called a socialist? Because he went in to create change and make change just as well as his brothers, Chavez, Gaddafi. He was talking about change for the people. Right. So when you do something about for the people, what happened? The folks who tend to be of the Republicans, Democrats, whoever, Independents, Green Party, when you're touching their money mm -hmm. and it's for the people, there's problems. So socialists at that time was a new ninja word. Okay. You know what I mean, it right. was a new ninja word. So they was basically calling Barack Obama's a ninja because you see, you had Chavez the same way. They called Cash for the same thing. Mm -hmm. They called Gaddafi. They called all the ones who was for the people. Mm. Now, if you're in a capitalist type of uh, society, but so all, Dave, I mean, you got it's, it's, it's all a gun. But I mean, when you got a few rich people mm -hmm. that basically set up the coup d'état, and, right. and, and but you got a majority of them because hey, y'all want to call in as the number is seven seven zero five five nine two nine nine nine. Dave, where were we at? I'm sorry. We we're much. actually to the part where we're using examples about different types of our brothers out there with the socialist system. Right. And so I made the point about Barack Obama when he started to say something for the people, when he started to say something about health care. Heck, we've been trying to get health care passed for the longest. Anything that was for the people, far as getting a little bit more money on their, mm -hmm. at the end of their paychecks so they can see a little bit more, it was always something. So anytime you do something for the people, Anything for the people, because the last few presidents and stuff, it wasn't always for the people. It was always, listen to my rich. agenda. Right. It's all about the agenda. Mm. So this was one that sounded a little bit different from all the rest. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So his little bit difference sounded like the brothers that's out there. That's why they called him the socialist. Right. Because well, it sounded like, oh, you sounding like you want to do something for the people. You sounding like Castro. Right. You sounding like Chavez. You right. sound like you want to do something for the people, Obama. So. Well, the only thing, the only uh, anytime the people are given or get anything from this capitalist system, they borrow those things from socialism. Right. Like mm -hmm. food stamps is socialist. Okay. Uh, Medicare is socialist. Uh, Reduced gas bills. Giving people socialist. scholarships mm -hmm. right. is socialist. Uh, even helping people with gas bills, that's a socialist. So socialism is the when they borrow it from socialism, that's the only good part about uh, this system. The system is capitalism, okay. and it does nothing but suck the bone of the right. people and make them poor and poor and poor and poor and keep them in slavery. So we have to destroy capitalism and, 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 and the power now, has to be so taken that, from it. With that, you know, it takes planning. I want to bring in King Noble because I know, you know, when we talk about revolution, we talk about black power, black supremacy, mm -hmm. there has to be a plan to it. And, you know, I know, like I said, you know, I've talked to Dave about when Fidel Castro, when they attempted the coup d'etat, they had seized him and they took him on a helicopter. And I guess they were about to kill him. You mean Chavez? Chavez. I'm sorry, Chavez. Thank you, Mukasa. But Chavez planted soldiers in there. So when they got up in the helicopter, uh, they called him and said, yeah, uh, you bring Chavez back or we're going to kill this new regime. Oh, no, Got right. uh, speak on that. Yeah, um, I thought that was interesting that um, how well he was prepared to really um, not be overthrown. Right. Um, That's very important. Okay. Um, he 
he set up a lot of social reform programs to help feed the people and take right. care of the people, um, medical care. But I think how he died, potentially some CIA or the government having something to do with it. No, nah, they wouldn't do that. Can you how he that died thing? showed how even much more important is being prepared to deal with your enemy. That's right. You could feed your people, clothe your people. You can have the best government, the best system, the best model. But if you're not prepared to deal with your enemies, then it will all be in vain. They will, they will take you out, and they will use all strategies to implement a new system in your government, to destabilize your government. So I, that's what I see with the, um, the Hugo Chavez piece. With all that, you got to make sure that you're ready to deal with who your enemies are. You can't oh. set up new. Oh, okay. You can't set up anything new that's going to maintain until you are actually in a position right. to really fight off who your real enemy is. Keep your enemies in check. Mm. Because I believe that he was killed right. by this regime. Mm. So take that into consideration. You've got to be foolproof and know that your enemy is, is trying to get you every moment and every second. And that, that has to be the, the, the main focal point before we can even get into social services. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, caller. Go ahead, caller. Caller, go ahead, speak. Okay. You mentioned that, Brother Kino, but that you believe that uh, they want to assassinate the attention on them. And then earlier we discussed, but a caller had disagreed with this, that Venezuela is the largest producer of oil because they have what they call heavy oil. You know, so, you know, if, if you know physics, you know, anything that's heavy, you can dilute and produce mass numbers of it. And so they basically outnumber the United States, outnumber China, outnumber Saudi Arabia with their heavy oil production. So I would say there is a means of assassination for take out you, Hugo Chavez. So, you know, what's your take on that? America, before any of these Soviet con countries or any of these alternative social systems right. can flourish, America is going to have to be destroyed. That's mm. what we see with Korea now. We see Kim, the new um, Kim president, right. 28 years old, he's coming in office saying, I'm aiming nukes at Washington, D.C. He's coming in correct. Right. He's watched all these leaders get killed and get assassinated. Right. So he know what he's up against. Okay. So he's ready. He's coming in the office saying, I'm going to have to wipe my enemies out. There's nothing I can do. The first yeah. plan of action is wiping my enemies out okay. when I get into this particular position. Okay, okay. We got we to gotta wipe them out. Um, it's not, uh, the problem is not how terrible these countries are being ran, but how ineffective we're able to deal with who our enemies is. Because even if we get it going right, they're going to come and destroy us. We got to get them out the way. Mm. First plan of action is destroying your enemies. As long as your enemy is still, still alive and still up and well and aiming at every second to kill you and take you down, then any progress that you have will be temporary and very short lived. So Dave, he talks about Kim Jong-un, you know. Uh, and you know, I agree with the brother Wade just got through saying you have to take your, I'll get to your question. I okay, agree okay. with him, but you, you do have to take your enemy out. Mm. So because you, you got to look at the psychosis behind that, the mindset. Their mindset was always filled with filth and greed. And this is a thing that just harvests like a well-oiled machine just That's over right. and over and over and over to suppress you, to keep the foot to the neck. You have to, by any means, take out your enemy. I mean, look at the United States. What, what did they tell they, their, uh, their troops? By any means, you By take them means. out. That's right. You take them out. That's the enemy. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think it's another side to that. Okay. Uh, and that is that we have to organize our people. All of us have to belong to organization, and we got to re-educate our people and make them know and understand what a revolution is. And we got to out-organize imperialism because uh, even though we may want to take them out, they're the ones with the big bombs and all that, mm -hmm. but we have to organize the people so strong that the will of the people is greater than any weapon. And we have, and, and so, anyway. Yeah, no, and I remember McCarthy, because I know you marched with... Uh, um, Martin Stokely, right? Stokely, yeah, Stokely Carmichael. And I remember he said something so profound, and, and that's why I'm bringing this topic of today, he said you can, I think not only he said it, but I think uh, it was said by several Panthers, they said you can kill the revolutionary, no, you, but you can kill the revolutionary, but you can't kill the revolution. It was Fred Hampton who said Fred that. Hampton, that's why he said that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and, well, and, revolution gone because revolution is in the people. Right. To be free is within all the people. Right. I think and he so, said you had a telephone call. Okay, go ahead, caller. Go ahead. 
Hello? Yes. Yeah, I got a couple of quick things I want to run down real quick. I'm going to try to be real brief. You will. Uh, I, I don't know whether or not you all know this or not, but um, I don't know what the show, your show you're talking about today because I am unable to get to you guys on the internet. Okay. When I try to go to the uh, blackatheist.com, they tell me that there's malware and spyware uh, on that page, and my computer won't let me get to it. Okay. What I'm suggesting is, if you can, maybe you guys can check that out. Also, you need to put up something on Facebook saying where you can send a donation. Uh, I can't get to a lot of blackatheist.com. So I was thinking maybe if you guys could put something on Facebook, like an address, to where, you know, you can send a donation. And number three, I would like for Black Sean or uh, uh, to, to let me know, last week he had Seti on the show. And Seti was saying that he was uh, in the near future coming to Columbia, South Carolina. That's where I am. My question is, I don't know where he's going to come what facility he's going to be at, who's going to bring him in. I was wondering if you guys could get some more information on that. Okay, brother, what I'm going to have to do, uh, the Facebook on the, the Black Atheists of Atlanta on Facebook, go to that, and I'm going to post all the information personally. So give me, give me about 24 hours, and I will personally post everything that you need to know on Black Atheists of Atlanta on Facebook. Okay. And then you will see. Right, y'all be, be good. I'll talk to you later. All right. Appreciate that. Long live the revolution. That's right. Okay. So I was saying that we have to organize our people, build organization, and educate our people, and work to take over and make our people see the importance of Africa, make our people see the importance of having a land, make our people see the importance of having an identity as African, teach our people to love each other and to work together. And that it's more than just destroying, we have to build. Our okay. job is to build a nation. Our job is to rebuild our people and make them love and, and, and love each other. Now, Mukas, I think, and, and I agree with that, but I think what uh, Brother King Noble was saying is mm -hmm. that he already anticipated the rich oligarchies coming in. He already anticipated uh -huh. that, you know what, there's some rich people. I'm, I'm in the land with the most oil mm. refinery on the planet. Mm. Like I said, let me say it again, mm. more than Saudi Arabia, more than the United States, more than China, to that caller that said that <laughs> Venezuela don't have more oil. And he anticipated these people coming in and overthrowing him. So he hit them in the compartment. So what you're saying, Hugo Chavez created a, a defensive basically is what I'm saying. I mean, he had a military, but he took the revolution to the people. Right, right, And made right. the people love the revolution, made the people part of the revolution. Absolutely. And the more he organized the people, the more he educated the people toward the revolution, the more he gave the people okay. the benefits from the revolution, then the more the people defend and the that's revolution. Why, and that's why they put so, him back in office, right. Uh, his, 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 he had the people. So the people are stronger than his military. That's, that's a good point you make. Yes, sir. The, very point. The, on, the only thing, though, is just that if you, a lot of times we talk about waking the people up and giving them a revolutionary education, okay. revolutionary consciousness. Yes, but sir. if you don't take the enemy out, that's miseducating them. If you allow these institutions, because on a micro level, Hugo Chavez had to take over the radio station, the news. Everything. He had yes, to sir. do a, a coup. He had to totally wipe out the power structure that was keeping imperial U.S. United States imperialism. And, and you know white supremacy basically from governing over that country he had to take those enemies out in order to come into power he had to take out the rich greedy people yeah. right. that was sucking off the poor so even here in the United States of America we can't wake people up as long as the institutions that's manufacturing their sleep continue to exist at some point these 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 institutions are going to have to be destroyed that's manufacturing ignorance Mm. and anti-counter-revolutionary consciousness mm. for our people. Otherwise, as soon as we wake them up, they're going to put them right back to sleep because exactly. they are, they are well oil machines <laughs> and putting the people mat to sleep. So at some point, we got we to go at these institutions. Dave? I agree with the brother because the structure that we see exists right here in the good old United States 
it's a trickery structure. Right. And it's been trickery from the beginning of the times, and it's, it still is going to be that way. This, this whole structure is all based on... And you've right. got a good point because they trick black people into believing they middle class, they exactly. rich. Cause exactly. Because I don't know any black people that own Enron. I don't exactly. know any black people that own the manufacturing well, military when, supplies. When you, when you own the media, when you own the circus and everything that gets into your ear, if mm -hmm. you own that, right? if you own that and you spew up out of that, that message, and the one like my brother was talking right here, he's right. You got to organize and go ahead and educate the people. But if that power structure is so heavy and it crushes your voice and it moves like a tank into your households, into your ear, into your mindset, into your thinking, what my brother is saying is, it is true, but our people are so focused on looking at the picture that they give you. Right, and, and it, let me say this real quick. Just like the one Carter, he said, well, why are we glorifying Chavez? Again, I don't know Chavez, you don't know Chavez. We're talking about the legacy that Chavez left right. behind, which is Chavismo. Mm -hmm. And Chavismo, I will glorify because it eradicated 50% of the poverty we in his nature. Matter of fact, we, we, Chavez represented the people, and right. we're glorifying the benefits of the people. Right. And, uh, and it's the people versus the multinational corporations. That's right. And yes, I agree, eventually, the people are going to, ain't no other way but to destroy the multinational corporation that rape and rob right. the people. And these same multinational corporation and the Zionists, the imperialists, That's right. they control uh, the, all the resources of the world and they got their militaries to back it up. Right. And they own it, and Africa is the richest continent in the world. And right now, Obama and those are putting their militaries, the drone stations, to uh -huh. blow up Africa and to kill and assassinate African people. And you know, that's a very uh, interesting point you bring up there. Drones, military, because I know, mm -hmm. you know, they lowered the uh, standard Africa. of militaries and they were allowing manual military to come in, you know, they allowed the Nortenials, Serenials, Crips, Bloods, Vice Lords to come in as military, but then people in Washington, the Pentagon started complaining after, I think in Cyrus, California, where a military guy came back in the Nortenials and slaughtered the police officer, shot him in the head, so they're like, well, this becomes a problem, so now they want to replace you military manually with the drones. So that's yeah, well, they point. slow, yeah, because they can just fly drones, and they're making all kind of things that they can make bombs, they making little things that look like little birds flying in the right. sky. Mm -hmm. I saw where they were using squirrels and making artificial squirrels with the carrier bombs That's and, right. and other things. And they use diseases like AIDS That's and, right. uh, to kill, kill us off too. But now we know that they're on their way to, they're in Africa, Afrikan, and uh, I think around the holidays, Christmas, they invaded 35 different countries by sending military mm. to these countries and they are preparing to fight a major war in Africa. And that now all of us and all of us with African descent from around the world in the Caribbean and in here in the United States, mm -hmm. we're gonna have to make a decision. Are we going to allow our children, uh, their churches and other people I'm talking to, uh, just individual, you can hear me. Are you gonna allow your children, your people, are you going to Africa and murder and kill people that look just like you for the slave master, America, who put you in slavery, who murdered you, who held you in slavery 500 years, who got you in the condition that you're in now, are you going to fight for your slave master against your motherland, Africa? And I'm saying to you, as little brother is saying, uh, imperialism must find his grave. That's right. We must put him in the grave. And Sekou Toure, a great leader of West Africa, Guinea, uh, but a pan-Africanist says that imperialism will find its grave in Africa. That's right. They will fight harder for Africa than they have fought anywhere in the world because Africa got the oil, the diamonds, the gold, the oil, the zinc, the tea, the copper, the pearl, the cobalt, the manganese, and it belonged to us. They stole us from it and made us ignorant of it, and now many of us are begging and obeying our slave masters, getting in their military, and propagating lies for this enemy that we live under. Okay. Slavery and them putting us in slavery did not do us no favor. Mm -hmm. If you think it did you a favor, you sick and ignorant and been brainwashed by the white man. Okay. Uh, our fight is for Africa 
And we'll never be free until Africa is free. Okay, I mean, uh, yes, King Nobi, he, he brings up a good point about, you know, this is a, bottom line is about resources. And I remember watching a documentary, I think it was the Hutus of the Congo, and um, I remember I watched this documentary and they had uh, got these tourists of white people because the, the white, this is after the Rwanda um, conflict. Mm. And the guy was like, oh man, these are actually the Hutus. And the Hutus told him he slaughtered all the rest of the white people and he let just this one group and he said, look, you let people know that all of Africa is at war. That basically all of Africa, he, he's not only talking about the Congo, but he, he said all, he we represented all of Africa. And there was a situation where they had uh, UN soldiers, and I think they had like four Europeans, and he said basically to all you African soldiers, we gonna spare y'all, but y'all gonna turn up the uh, Europeans. I mean, what's your, what's your take on that? That's deep, that's deep. Um, for one, what, what, I'm, what I'm seeing is, is that with the, with the whole Chavez piece, right. which is, is connected with what you're saying is, I don't see, I look on YouTube, I, I look on Facebook, and I see a lot of black people, you know, crying about Chavez, right, sad right. about him and, and his death. And he was a very strong brother, and he represented the, someone who, who was willing to stand against United States imperialism. But right. I find it interesting that we don't know who our revolutionaries are. Right. And if we know what made Hugo Chavez so powerful is that he was supported by the people. So That's I think right. the energy that our people are putting towards Hugo Chavez needs to be directed to towards some of our own revolutionaries. Okay. They don't know, are they, 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 are they supporting Black Sun? Are they supporting King Noble? Are they supporting revolutionaries of our time to change the consciousness of our, in a situation of our people? Mm. So we don't, they didn't even know that Kala died. They don't even know who Kwame right. Ture is. But That's we true. are crying over Hugo Chavez making his transition. Mm. If you have a revolution, you must support your revolutionaries. You must know who they are. Um, they don't make your revolutionaries popular. Mm -hmm. So it's up to you to back those individuals that are fighting for change and fighting for liberation in our own people. And then we can have some of the success right here in the United Snakes of America that Hugo Chavez had. Once we begin to support those that are like us, that are defending our cause, then we can have some change within our social reality. But don't, don't, don't you agree, though, that King Noble, that they have to have some type of political education and structure and what to fight for because a lot of people don't even, I've, I've talked to people who are so-called conscious, but you ask them, well, what type of, let's just say we overthrow the white man. What type of economical structure would you set up? And they have no clue. They have no clue about what socialism is. They have no clue of what capitalism is. They have no clue of what, you know, economical. If, you know, if your house is burning up, right. you might not know exactly how what tool you gonna use to put out the fire or get out the house, but you know that your house is burning up. Right. And you need to get out that fire. Okay. You know, so in the situation that we in with a 16 year old boy getting shot down in New York right. seven times, That's right. you know, we're, we are, we're under fire. Absolutely. So we need to move towards getting from under fire or otherwise we will be too extinct to even deal with the issues of economics and deal with post-revolution. Right. We won't even make it to the point that you're talking about mm. unless we start even dealing with some of the warfare that's up on our people right now every day. You did the show on the prison reform. That's you right, have, that's right. You've been tackling these issues that's dealing with what our people are up under. So even if we're not advanced enough in our political thought to get to levels of restructuring an entire governmental system, we all are aware that we are under fire. Mm. with this enemy. And if we're going to have to do something about it, we're going to have to support those that are against it. And the time is now for us to make some power moves to change our condition. That's okay. why I always say it, you know, the numbers of our shows, you have to take the laws and the rules of the game of the United States and play against those rules. Find your way, because we're so stuck to them. Right. We're stuck like a Venus flytrap. Right. We don't want to pull away. We don't want to pull away from what he has said because we fear that we're going to get in trouble. I've made a number of occasions that I always use the example of my Hispanic friends and my Asian friends. Right. And there are households where they look at their laws and say, you know what? If I do this, I'm going to get stuck here. Let me play in the middle. And I'm glad you mentioned that. Let Dave. me play in the middle for everything I do. And what right. we have done, we always play along. See, like, for instance, just hypothetically speaking, we got... Barack Obama. Mm. 
mm -hmm. as being a president. What does that do emotionally? Black people, yes, he's our black president. Okay. Okay. And now he's what? nothing better than assassin. Now, and what, what, what's, what, what's after that? He is an assassin. Right. Okay. What's after that? Let's right, put all right. the stuff aside and understand. You got to look at the plan. I don't care who it is, it be him or whatever. Look at the plan and understand the plan. Right. Understand how does that tie into me right. and move away from me. And also, I would like to say that we have to be clear on what we're fighting for and what we're fighting against. Right, I agree. And that, totally again, I, we are African people. And uh, we're revolutionary. We want to be revolutionaries. Mm -hmm. And revolution comes in all forms. And there are revolutionaries in all countries. Mm -hmm. That's right. And people of all colors are fighting against this one enemy that we have, imperialism. Mm -hmm. Some and and, and yes. they oppress people of all color. And right. they are revolutionaries of all colors. That's true. And I, and I want to ask you a quick question. Because, you know, with the drones, they're, they're looking to phase out manual uh, forces in the mm -hmm. military pretty soon, I'm sure, Okay. in the police force too, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So what's your advice to the military, to the people who are, you know, I mean, because if you look at it, the military, you can say, is a form of socialism. You know, they pay your, supposedly your... Oh, well, you know, militaries are slaves. They're slaves. They're killing and murdering people of color for imperialism. Okay. And the military are nothing but assassins, Obama's the head assassin. That's and right. that they use whether Explain they use, why Obama's the head assassin. Well he's uh, he just assassinated the government of Libya. That's and right. He killed hundreds of thousands of people. They're well, Wait a minute, because he shook the man's hand. Who shook his hand? Obama shook uh, Gaddafi's hand. And, yeah, and then and at the same time they were planning to kill him. When his master he said shook Jobs's hand. When his master said kill him, they killed him. Wow. Obama is one of them he can look like us. For an example, I organized and helped put the first black people on police forces throughout the South, mm -hmm. helped put the black males and black politicians. When they didn't allow them to vote, when they used to blow up our houses and schools for just trying to register to vote, the Democrats were throwing the dynamite That's right. at us. So Man, I put dynamite. these people off when they, for an example, I use one example. In Jackson, Mississippi, when they killed Mary Evans, we demonstrated and we started rioting and the federal government came and begged us not to burn the city down, that they guaranteed they would put a black police on the floor and they put one on their name Red. Mm -hmm. And when they would put us in jail, they would handcuff us, and then they would give Red the billy stick, and Red would and say, y'all demonstrated for a nigger police. Uh, come in Red, and they get Red to stick. Red would beat you until the white folks pull them off you. He went through the neighborhood, arrested everybody, including his mama, his brother, mm -hmm. and everybody. He was shooting people like animals. And when he died, thousands of people came out to the cemetery to the funeral and just stuck knives in him and celebrated his death. So I'm saying all these politicians, when they get in, mm -hmm. black power may put them in, but when they get in, they work for white power. So I'm saying that we have to organize our people, educate okay. our people, and we would never be the assassins and the murderers of the white man. We ain't trying to be like the white I man. Am. We don't want to be like the white man. King Noble. But I am. Well, well, to touch on that. Touch You've got to learn from your enemy. What he's doing is effective. He's right. effectively exactly. maintaining power and dealing with his enemies in a way where he can maintain power. If we want power, we're going to have to go ahead and be real and, 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 and step up to what we got to step up to. Be efficient. It, it, it's a reality. Right. We can't be too righteous and too, our mind can't be shot up it's so into space that we can't confront the real issues that are at hand. Well, I'm saying confront the real issues, but we don't want to be like, we ain't trying to be sad. We're trying to be humane. We're trying to... Any means well, necessary. Some people say that yeah, humane has got us on a slave ship. Any no, means no. necessary. I, I'm not talking about being oppressive. I'm talking about destroying capitalism and imperialism and all forces of oppression without mercy. So we agree on that, brother. I'm just saying we got to be organized and educate it's, our it's, people. It's, 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 they, like a, it's like a white man told me one time, a neighbor back in California. What did that he he told say? me, he says, you know what, I hear all... <laughs> I hear all the talk and all the marching and things. He said, the only way we, we don't pay attention to what you do. Mm. We don't pay attention to what you do. What we pay attention to is once you start getting together and cutting off our money. Well, with we that, pay attention to that. With that being said, Chavez, before he even got into office, Social. he had his soldiers already ready to go. So he pre planned ahead mm -hmm. and he. Uh, like mm. I said, Chavismo. If anybody knows a better system, 
y'all let me know. Well, we need a great social system, and we need to have a great army throughout Africa. We need to buy some nuclear bombs from North Korea, that great warrior North Korea, Black supremacy. and put them all over Africa and say to American Europe, if you come to bomb, kill, rob us of our diamonds, gold, oil, rubber, zinc, tea, or anything like that, we would nuke you. But Black we supremacy. definitely have to defend Africa, and we have to defend our motherland. Right. We are African people. We out. Black power. Peace. Black supremacy.